Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to call this meeting to order. This is a regular board meeting on October 16, 2007. It is 5.30 p.m. and we're here at 1900 Price Road. Uh, ever since the Texas Pledge was uh, changed some time ago, there's been a little confusion when we recited. Uh, because of that, I'm going to ask Mrs. Uh, Ms. Drew Brown to go ahead and lead us right on two and three. Uh, she'll be speaking it uh, very loudly in the microphone so we can follow along <laughs> and catch those changes. Mrs. Brown? Thank you, Dr. Escobedo. Please rise for a moment of silent silence. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Thank you, Ms. Brown, a former teacher of mine, English. I uh, still remember those good old days. Uh, moving on to item four, roll call. I'll let the record reflect that Mr. Lehman did call. He will be. He's running a little late, and so is Mr. Aguilar. Everyone else. I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Cortez. I apologize. Uh, everyone else is, is present. Item six. I recommend approving the minutes of the regular board meeting of October the 2nd, 2007. <coughs> right. Item 5. Recommend approving the agenda of the regular board meeting of August of October 16, 2007 with any corrections. Well, I'm, I'm starting off a little rough today, aren't I? Okay. Uh, Mr. Gonzalez? Thank you, Dr. Escobedo. Yes, submitted. Okay. Uh, do I have a motion uh, to approve? I move. Motion by Mrs. Uh, Galvan, seconded by Mr. Aguilar. All in favor, raise your right hand. The motion passes unanimously. Now, item six, recommend approving the minutes of the regular board meeting of October 2, 2007, with any corrections, any corrections on the minutes of October the 2nd. If not, do I have a motion to approve? I move. Motion by Mrs. Galvan, seconded by Mr. Parrish. All in favor, raise your right hand. The motion passes unanimously. Moving on to Superintendent's report, conference presentations one, presentation of education leadership program proposal of UTB, Mr. Gonzalez. Thank you, Dr. Scoelho, members of the board. We presented this at the curriculum committee meeting. We briefly did a presentation on this and we're going to expand it a little bit. Uh, Ms. Fox has been working with the university and uh, I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Fox and she'll introduce those people that are here from the university to give us a better uh, perspective of what the programs look like. Ms. Fox. Thank you, Mr. Gonzalez, Dr. Escobedo, members of the board. As Mr. Gonzalez said, this information was presented at the curriculum committee. We're looking to expand our pool of applicants for assistant principals and in working with the university, they've uh, proposed to develop a program that will not only assist us in that, but also assist them. So at this time, I'd like to introduce Dr. Nick Vallado and Dr. Michelle Avrigo to make a, a brief presentation regarding the proposed proposal. Dr. Vallado. Mr. Board President, members uh, of the board and Mr. Gonzalez, members of his staff, uh, briefly, we just want to just say that uh, this summer we received an exceeding number of phone calls from your campus administrators asking uh, if we had any names to recommend for uh, assistant principal positions. And of course, uh, this was kind of mid-summer or late summer, and he said, well, at the beginning we had, but since BISD does not, uh, at, that, at that time, did not honor any uh, temporary probationary certificates, uh, we had recommended those people to other districts. And of course, uh, later on, we found out that uh, Brownsville did change its policy. The our uh, professors in education administration we met, and uh, we got together and we put a proposal that we shared with the superintendent and Ms. Fox, whereby um, the education administration program would offer two courses in the uh, spring semester, two in the summer, summer one, two in summer two, and then offer the ILD and PDAS in between as continuing education courses, and conceivably we could have anywhere between 20 and 25 uh, persons that would be eligible for a probationary uh, certificate, used to be a uh, temporary certificate, and could be ready for uh, a position uh, if employed uh, or offered a position by the district. The uh, requirement is simply that they must be, uh, of course, uh, part of the, of the pool that uh, the district would uh, pick and also must be eligible to apply and be admitted into the graduate school. 
the, uh, our professors would uh, assist the, the group in uh, the process, uh, GRE uh, and the paperwork necessary for that, and we would tailor the courses uh, to a time uh, that would be of, uh, of benefit and mutually acceptable to <coughs> the, uh, the, the persons. I'd like to make it clear that uh, this would be at no cost to the district and also would be obviously uh, no cost to the university other than we would be the recipients uh, obviously of their tuition and you would be the recipient of the trained uh, uh, future administrators. Uh, we uh, are ready to assist in any way we can and somehow word has spread out and we've gotten calls from McAllen and from other areas so uh, uh, we want to first of all offer this opportunity to BISD and as such uh, would be the only pilot program that we would have later on perhaps in the next year uh, we would uh, extend the same offer to other districts but right now we're just uh, simply approaching BISD and we stand ready to answer any of your questions that you may have if uh, let me just say in, in conclusion that it's nice to see some of my, our former uh, uh, students here uh, and it's always nice to to come back and chat with them a little bit and so uh, uh, Mr. Board President and Mr. Superintendent, thank you so much. If you have any questions for us, we'd be delighted to answer them. Questions or comments from the board, Mr. Powers. Thank you, uh, Dr. Well, uh, Ms. Gonzalez and Dr. Vallado. Uh, according to the program, which I love the program, it gets our teachers getting involved to be the, an administrator. Uh, you, you got here between 20 and 25 will be selected by BISD. Uh, are there going to be room for more than 25, if possible? Uh, that, that would be, we'd have to work it out because there are only five professors and we have to, uh, you know, take care of the other ones also. Right. So conceivably, you could have more than a pool of 20 to 25 because there are some in the pipeline right now that are taking the courses and once uh, that uh, you have opened up the door for probationary temporary certificates, uh, you should be able to have more. Now, if there is a, a, a great greater need for more than that, uh, we would have to discuss that and we would see if we could not uh, accommodate. Uh, I know that I've had some offers uh, from very qualified individuals to assist as adjuncts and we certainly would consider that and some of these are obviously from BISD and other districts. Thank you. Any other questions or comments, Mr. Aguilar? Uh, yes, and first, uh, it's nice to see you again, Dr. Vallado. Uh, he's my former instructor at uh, like some of us here at BIC. Uh, I think it's a wonderful program, Dr. Vallado. And in fact, at the curriculum committee, uh, we made a um, comment that perhaps we could do the same thing with counselors. Uh, it seems to be there's a great need of counselors in the school district. And uh, of course, this is not directed to you because I think this is a great program. However, uh, during the curriculum uh, uh, committee, uh, Dr. Escobedo, there were several comments that we were concerned about not basically, not directly to the program, but rather as to who would be chosen by the principals. Uh, we were talking about that perhaps the principal or the district itself must set a certain criteria to select those that will be participating in the program because uh, uh, we don't want to send the wrong message to, to all these people. We have a great pool of assistant principals, well, rather, let's say, educators who have mean management that are graduates of, of the same program, UTB, in Brownsville they still have not been hired. So uh, as, as a district, we just want to make sure we are not sending the, the wrong message to those that are, are potential, that someday would like to become administrators. But as for the program itself, uh, I know it would give us a larger pool of candidates and, and of course that would give us a, a much better opportunity to select our the best administrators. Thank Publicly, you. I would like to say that uh, in discussing this with the superintendent that this by no way would guarantee anybody a position, but it would provide a pool of, of already trained individuals that would be ready uh, to be recommended for a certificate. Now the certification rules have changed. In the past we, would, we, we were able to offer or recommend a person to uh, TEA for a probationary certificate uh, based on the completion of a certain amount of courses. This is no longer the case. Uh, the university now, or universities now, cannot recommend anybody for a probationary certificate unless they have a job offer. So it's kind of like a catch-22. You will not employ 
unless they have certificate. We will not uh, recommend it unless they have an offer of employment. But uh, I think that this could be worked out by uh, if the district uh, is serious about a candidate and would offer them a job by presenting a letter of offer of employment, then I think if they've met all the other requirements, we would proceed to recommend them for a probationary certificate. Mr. Gonzalez? Mrs. Levan? As a former uh, student of Dr. Valladas and Dr. Abrico, welcome. Uh, I did want to say that uh, I'm so happy that we're working really closely with the university. We always like that uh, feeling of, of being close and, and being able to work with you. And I really want to thank you for giving our uh, educators the opportunity to be part of a cohort. We are growing as a district, and we are going to need administrators. So thank you so much for your consideration. Thank you. Uh, let me just add, we now are fully staffed. Uh, we have five uh, full-time professors. Some of you may remember uh, Ms. Ayala or something like that. When, when I started, we only had one. And of course, uh, he retired, and I replaced that gentleman, Dr. Thompson. And for a while, we only had one. Then we grew it into two, three, four, now we have five, and who knows you know, where. But we're always, uh, I personally have always been of the belief that we need to collaborate with the districts because after all, particularly Brownsville, you're our biggest you know, supplier of, of students. And we would like to uh, be in a position to, to assist like we are uh, giving you the, uh, the opportunity for this particular cohort group. Mr. Gonzalez? Thank you, uh, Dr. Scott, members of the board. Uh, you know, uh, when we did present this to, to the curriculum committee, we did hear uh, what the committee members were saying, and, and we took it to heart. And we are going to develop some criteria for the selection process. Of course, you either have to be nominated or self-nominated to be able to, and then we'll set up a certain criteria to do this. But I do want to bring something to, 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 to the whole board, as, as they say, and to the general public concerning the vacancy. We have currently have six vacancies. Uh, applicants from BISD are six that uh, have applied to be assistant principals. We have a total of 13 applicants. The other seven are from out of, out of BISD. And out of those six that are, that, that are wanting to be assistant principals, two want transfers, basically from one administrative position to the other. So even if they got it, that means another administrative position would be left vacant. So this would just give us a better pool to draw from. Um, I do want to say that uh, for all those uh, teachers that are out there that are thinking about becoming administrators, in the very near future when we open up the uh, three elementaries, the middle school and the high school, it's going to have a tremendous impact on administration. We're going to need a, a large number of assistant principals between 20 and 27 is what I estimate because some of the those are going to need principals too, those schools. So when I promote assistant principals to principals, it's going to create vacancies in the assistant principalship. So the better pool we have, I think the better we can be for BISD. And so if those teachers are interested, they can self-nominate themselves. Certainly I've talked to Dr. Vallado and that, that you know, this is just a cohort. They're all also more than welcome to join the regular program at, uh, at UTB and to be able to get into that pool will give them equal value. This is just something to for cohort to be able to work together and be able to get the classes that they need on a timely manner. And, uh, you know, but we will bring it and we'll send it out to the board once we develop all the criteria. I just wanted to bring it up to the board and see if, if we had a favorable response in going into this area. Any other comments or questions from the board? Dr. Vallada, Thank was you, Mr. Board President. You Mr. Earlier. President. And uh, like one man once said, muy agradecido, muy agradecido, muy agradecido. Thank you, Dr. Abrego. Thank you, Ms. Fox. Hello, Vargas. <laughs> Item two, presentation of principal's evaluation, Mr. Gonzalez. Uh, thank you, Dr. Escobedo. This is a, a, a presentation, that, and of course, he has an action item attached to it on the consent agenda, but it gives you the opportunity to ask questions. Uh, as we went through this new evaluation of principals, it really hasn't changed much. We've added an area, which is student performance, and that's the key area. Uh, I want to say that this was carefully reviewed. Principals have reviewed it already. They have accepted it. It's part of, 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 the, of the whole program that's there for principals' evaluation. I think it gives you a better outlook on the principalship. And the ones that have been really working closely with it is our human resources. So I'll turn it over to Ms. Fox to, to elaborate a little bit on this. Ms. Fox. Thank you, Mr. Gonzalez, Dr. Escobedo, members of the board. <coughs> 
as Mr. Gonzalez said, the principles evaluation is pretty much the same, the same domain, uh, eight domains that have always been there. As you look on page 19 through 22 in your materials, you'll see the commissioner's rule that requires that we have a domain nine, which includes the academic excellence indicators and the performance objectives. To point out to you just a couple of changes, all of domains one through eight are the same in both elementary, middle school, and high school. There is uh, a domain nine, which includes the campus accountability rating, the AYP, or the Ad Adequate Yearly Progress prelim Preliminary Report, their campus attendance, the tax commended performance, and then the summary of all their tax scores. That is across the board for all elementary, middle school, and high school principals. In addition to that, for the middle school, we've added one additional indicator, which is their dropout rate, which will be part of that, which is also part of the AYP. And then at the high school level, we have the, the one indicator added, which is the completion rate that we're all familiar with. Um, this is, must be by law adopted by the board as the evaluation instrument, as Mr. Gonzalez said. The principals had input as we developed this. The area assistant superintendents have met with the principals. I've met with every single principal myself in reference to this. Everybody uh, seems to be understanding of the process. Last night it was presented to the DEIC, and all of them were also in agreement. A couple of them said they were glad they weren't principals last night at the DEIC, but they were glad that this was a principal's instrument. So um, the requirement of, uh, requirement of the accountability of the campus for the principal is included in this, and if you've reviewed these documents, uh, that's all in there. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer any of them. Questions or comments from the board? Thank you, Ms. Fox. Thank you. <clears throat> Moving on to item three, presentation of the Brownsville Independent School District financial report for the period ended August the 31st, 2007, Mr. Gonzalez. Thank you. Um, I just want to point out one thing in this report and then turn it over for questions and Mr. Sancho will be glad to answer any questions. But if you look at page 67, you don't have to really look at it. I want to point out something. Expenditures versus revenues. As of August 31st, we had expenditures of almost $66 million. And we had revenues of about $10.5 million. That's what's come in. So you see there's a difference there of about $55 million. This is why it's very important to have a healthy fund balance to be able to cover that because we don't get any money in August. We don't get our first disbursement from the state until September. So if we don't have money in our fund balance, in our savings account, to cover this, then we're going to be able to cover the paychecks for, for, for all personnel. So by doing, keeping a healthy fund balance that we do have, it makes us be able to be flexible and be able to cover those $55 million until the money comes in in September and then we catch up and, and everything goes well from there. I just wanted to point that out. Are you wondering why, why those numbers are there? Questions comes from the board? Thank you, Mr. Gonzalez. Item five, presentation on monthly report of the BISD bond oversight. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, item four. Presentation of the, of the school first uh, rating for June 30th, 2006, Mr. Gonzalez. Thank you, Dr. Escuela, members of the board. Uh, this is a very important rating for us. And, you know, I, I'm not going to take uh, any thunder away from our chief financial officer here who really works hard at this and, and has gotten a superior rating. So I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Sanchez to give this presentation because I think it's really something that we need to talk about. Uh, thank, <coughs> thank you, Mr. Gonzalez, uh, Dr. Scobedo, board members. Uh, before I do, though, you know, the credit goes to the administrators that I've been blessed to work with, and I'd like for them to these come up here you know we always recognize a, a lot of other folks but we never recognize some of these folks so I'm going to call on them to come up here and uh, and then I'll, I'll make a short presentation on some of the key elements and some of the changes and then you know I'll answer any questions that you may have uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Tony Fuller administrator for budget Tony you come up here yeah. all right Tony. Ken Whittemore, uh, he does employee benefits and risk management. Okay, you, you stay up here. Uh, right, right in the middle, Tony, so everybody can see you. <laughs> Get on the camera. <laughs> uh, Oscar Tapia Facilities. 
Robert Reese Finance. Mary Garza Payroll. Dante Herina Pins. Oscar Lopez, Student Accounting. Kenneth Lee, uh, uh, Warehouse Textbooks, Fixed Assets. And I have a couple other folks that are up uh, in, in, in Austin uh, doing some in service. It's uh, Balda Islas, Bitech Specialist, and Rosie Pena, Administrator for Purchasing. These are the folks that really have earned the superior rating for the last five years. You know, they are the folks that are behind the trenches and make all of these elements that we're going to be talking about possible. So I take my head off to them. Uh, so let's give them another round. I was going to say, what are they coming in for us oh, okay, to? Okay, okay, sure. sure. Yeah, guys. So, so yeah, guys. We just uh, Let us just like we do with everybody else, they come around here and then we shake your hand. Come on. Come on. Come on. No pencils today. <laughs> no pencils. Uh, what about my badge? You have a, you have a packet, uh, in, in, and I'm just going to highlight a couple of things that I think may be of interest to not just for the folks here, but uh, on the TV audience and, and, and people who may be looking at this. And so I want to highlight uh, a couple of those criteria that were judged on. Uh, criteria number six, or indicator six, was uh, uh, the question is, was the percent of total tax collections greater than 96 percent? That's important because that's usually what drives some of the funding formulas for the state. And, and we're uh, last year we had 90, or the year before uh, 05, 06, we had 94.78 percent. This past year we had 99 percent collections. So a tremendous increase thanks to the people who collect our taxes. Um, of course, of interest uh, is, you know, that the requirement, which is indicator 11, the requirement has is gradually moving up to the 65 percent thing. Well, we in 0405, we were at 55 percent dollars in instruction. This past, or on 0506, we were at 55.8. This year, current year, we're around 61 percent. And we have to be at 65 this 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 current year, so so we're we're gradually, uh, you know, meeting the standard as it's supposed to be, and uh, hopefully we'll get there this year. So we're doing really well there. Uh, I know one of interest, and this one really, uh, even I was a little bit surprised. But I'm going to indicator 15, and we hear we hear ab about our district top heavy. And you know, administratively, well, in 0405, a district our size in administrative costs should be about 11 percent, 11.05 percent. In 0405, we were at 7 percent. On 0506, we went down. The standard still remained the same, 11.05, but we get down to 6.93. So, so you know, we're still a few percentage points in the administration to try to be there what the standard is for a district our size. So we're doing really well uh, in the glass palace, as they, as they say. Um, and so we're really doing well in terms of that percentage. Uh, indicator, indicator 16, which is of interest to, to uh, uh, the faculty and, and administration at the campus level, 
uh, was the ratio of students to teachers within the range for a district our size. Okay, for our district our size, per teacher, we should have a ratio no less than 13.5 and no greater than 22 to 1. Branzell ISD has 15.58. So the low range is 13.5, we're at 15.8. So we're somewhere uh, a little bit above the lower part of that range. Uh, indicator 17, which is tells us of the big picture, the story about all our staffing in the district. Well, in that, an, an indicator 17 says, what is the ratio of total staff to total employees of the district? A district our size, the low range is 6.6 .6 to 1 with a limit of 14. Here's where we're a little closer to the lower range. 6.6, .6, we're at 7.0. So. We're, in other words, what does that indicator say? We may be getting to where we have a little overstaffing as, as a whole. Um, of interest also is um, one that, of course, uh, they keep asking and people keep writing us up. But, you know, I, I guess I could say it, but it's, it's my own personal feeling. Uh, we failed this one two years in a row. And I'm, and I'm glad we failed it. And I say that because purposely we have been able to run the district, to serve the campuses, the departments with the needs, and yet people write us up because we have too much fund balance. But we built schools. We, the board has just approved, for example, a $14 million to build another uh, campus with local resources, not having to, to shift that burden of taxes to the taxpayers. So, and, and the superintendent alluded to a minute ago in your financials, that here is an instance where, you know, in one month, we'd have to come up with $55,000. So, when, I mean, 55 million, I'm sorry, dropped a few zeros there. Not like me to do that, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, it, it just goes to show you that, that even though we received a no, and I think one of the, the ways that other districts have been able to capture this one is as you have done this year, is to designate. As long as the board designates a specific purpose, you'll bring that, you'll bring that percentage down and you will get a yes on this one. And anything the board designates, it can undesignate. So I, I would just wanted to throw those couple of items at you so that you can have some uh, talking points tomorrow morning for coffee. So I will answer any, any questions uh, that you may have. Questions, comments from the board? Mrs. Galvan? Just uh, another congratulations on uh, your rating. Really proud of you. A lot of hard work. And uh, I was worried about that, that instructional part, the 65%, but it seems like you have a hand on it. And uh, glad to hear Glad to see that and hear that. And we've run our, our numbers for this coming year already, and we're, we're, just, we're monitoring it. Any other comments or questions? If not, uh, congratulations to all of our, our uh, financial staff, Mr. Uh, Sanchez and, and everybody else. And Mr. Aguilar, that was a great idea of having them come so we can personally congratulate them and shake their hands. Uh, I heard one of them say, I won't say who, Mr. Tapia, in all his years here, this was the first <laughs> time that uh, he had the opportunity to come and, and shake the board's hand. Uh, you know, it was my privilege to shake yours, so thank you all very much, and we were able to do this for the fifth consecutive year in a row, and that is excellent coffee talk, in my opinion. Moving on to item five, presentation on monthly report of the BISD Bond Oversight Committee, Mr. Gonzalez. Thank you, Dr. Scoyle, members of the board. Uh, at this time, uh, I think Mr. Bush Barbosa will be here to present for the Bond Oversight Committee, Mr. Barbosa. Thank you, Mr. Gonzalez. Board President, members of the board, uh, don't have much to report this month. You know, we didn't have our regular meeting uh, was reset for this coming month. So the only thing that I have to report for you is that uh, uh, Terry Ray has resigned from the board, from the, the bond committee due to the health reasons. And uh, just to inform the superintendent, because our bylaws require that we notify him so that he can uh, 
notify the individual board member that uh, appointed him so they can appoint a new a new member to the to the board so uh, other than that you know we, that's all we have and if you have any questions that you may like to give us or directions or anything we're we're here to do it mr uh, aguilar I could yes and i just want to thank the uh, the committee for the hard and dedicated work that you do for us. You're a tremendous asset to our community and also to our school district. And uh, I'll keep our prayers for Mr. Ray. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Any other comments from the board? I, I also uh, echo the, the uh, gratitude to for for all your members for the time that you invest to this committee. I know that most of us are not looking for extra activities to to participate in, so thank you. If nothing else, uh, we move Thank on you. to item six, board calendars, Mr. Gonzalez. Thank you, Dr. Escobedo. Uh, just a few highlights uh, concerning this, what's coming up this month. Uh, this coming uh, Saturday, if you have the opportunity, go to Donna High School for pick skin. Our, our, all our bands will be there, and we expect all Division One ratings when we come out of there. So. Uh, you have an opportunity to go, go go by Donna High School. I think they start in the early evening, about 7 o'clock with the presentation. So uh, if you can, go by there. You'll really enjoy our bands. Some have real good programs. Um, also, next week is National School Bus Safety Week. They have a chance to, to look at our bus drivers and thank them and, and our bus department. You have a chance to go by there and visit with them. You're more than welcome as board members or the general public just to go by and visit. I think a lot of times they really appreciate you stopping by there. Uh, also, it's Red Ribbon Week, Violence Prevention Week, so I'm asking all of you to, to join in any activities, the schools, if the AAs can send this out to, to, the, to uh, the board to see what activities are going on on the campus, it would be so like you can come by and see what's going on on the campuses. We'll be glad to have you there. Also, a very important date is the 23rd. It's Tax Toss Exit Level Retest. That's October 23rd to the 26th. It's a very important date. So those are parents that are out there, if you have juniors or seniors, that have taken the test and they're going to need to retake it. Or even if you are out of school and you want to come back and take the test because you want to get your high school diploma, please come by and we'd be glad to help you out. Uh, also, we have on, uh, on November 1st, Brownsville's Kids Voting. And, and we're very enthused about that. We always work very well with Kids Voting USA. So. Uh, I want to bring that up. And then, I know it's a long ways away, but I want to just bring it up so you can mark it on your calendars. On November, the, the week of November the 12th, and also general public, is National Children's Book Week. We invite you to go to our campuses, go to the libraries, and read to our kids. It would be great to be there. So if, if, you, if you want to go, if you, if you want an appointment, if you want us to help you find a campus that wants you to read, we'd be glad to help you out. So that's the week of uh, November the 12th. Those are some of the highlights. Thank you, Mr. Gonzalez. Questions, comments? Mrs. Galvan? I did want to make co one comment, and I've been looking at the website, our website, and it's just really nice to see on there the little reminders of our calendar reminders, and uh, um, it's been very impressive so that parents and our community know uh, what's going on, not only on our calendar here, but on the web. Okay. Mrs. Galvan, any other comments or questions? If not, then we move on to public audience. The next item on our agenda is a public comment period. This is a time for citizens, staff, or students to provide their comments to the board. Statements and questions from the audience will not be permitted during other portions of the meeting, so please let us hear from you now if you have comments to present. To have your comments heard tonight, your name and the subject matter of your comments must appear in the sign-in sheet, which is located in the rear of the meeting room. Each speaker will be limited to five minutes to complete his or her comments, and with all due courtesy, I will strictly enforce that time limit. If a group of people want to be heard on the same topic, the board asks that they designate a spokesperson to avoid needless repetition. The board has adopted rules to preclude the abuse of open forum by, for example, anyone uselessly repeating the same comment or complaint meeting after meeting. All participants must understand that if you come in my comment in my judgment constitute a complaint against an employee or an officer, I will interrupt you. Uh, I would ask you to stop and direct you to proceed uh, with the BISD formal grievance procedures, be that DGBA, FNG, or GF local. With those cautious in mind, I will not be glad to hear your comments. Um, the first speakers are Robert and Ruth, uh, I'm sorry, Sierra? Sierra, and they'll be speaking of uh, Down by the Border. Yes, uh, Dr. Escobedo and board members, I'd like to thank you for this opportunity. 
Uh, we want to invite you to the uh, second annual Fall Festival uh, for Down by the Border. Uh, basically, it's an organization that I'm a member of. My, I'm sorry, my name is Robert Serra. And uh, uh, this organization was started three years ago to help kids and their parents uh, that have uh, uh, Down syndrome or basically any physical uh, handicap. And uh, we've been very, very successful, and uh, a lot of this has, has been attributed to BISD's cooperation. We've had uh, a lot of volunteers from the BISD. The uh, major ones have been uh, Rebecca Rendon, uh, Marsha Bentoncourt, Ramiro Trevino, and Estela Flores. And I understand that they have picked up about 300 volunteers for our festival in two weeks. Uh, the festival is from 9 to 1. Uh, last year we had about 3,000 people there, and that was our first, first annual. This year we're expecting a few more. We've got a, a few more things uh, for the children. Uh, basically the reason we're doing this is, like you all did a little earlier, recognize our children and give the normal uh, kids an opportunity to mingle with kids that have these uh, special needs. Uh, we uh, would like to thank you for giving us the opportunity to use your marquees. Uh, last year we, we used them and had great success because a lot of the kids saw them and were able to, to convince their mom and dad to bring them to the, to the free festival. It is a free festival, there is no charge. We have bouncers, we have uh, rock climbing, we have clowns, we have face painting, we have a little bit of everything, uh, music, a little bit of everything for everyone. And uh, we've got some posters uh, here that I'd, if you all are interested, we'd like to hand them <coughs> out to you. And if you'll help us advertise, we'd love it. Uh, just thank you very much. Uh, we Oh, I'm sorry, we did forget one. I did forget one. We also, this year, we've added a uh, one-mile uh, walk and a five-mile tour, uh, basically enjoying our new uh, trail. Uh, and uh, this you can either uh, register at uh, Bicycle World or there at the, at the party. Uh, they are, we are charging $5. Uh, the $5 is to cover the shirts, and really, the money will not be used to pay for the shirts because the shirts were donated. We will use the money to donate it onto someone else that's also going to be helping kids. So thank you very much uh, for your time. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, be happy to answer them now. Thank you, Mr. Serra. I've been to some of your functions, and I think it's great what you do. If you'd like, you can give your, your, your posters to, to uh, uh, Pat, and she'll, she'll uh, let us have it. Thank, thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much. much. Our next speaker is Minerva Peña, Chess at BISD. Thank you, Dr. Escovedo and board members. Uh, my name is Minerva Peña. I'm sure most of you already know me or heard about me. Uh, I've been working in the city for the last 28 years. Today I come to you in reference to Chess at BISD. If you know, the chess program has been around for quite a few years. In fact, my child is now a sophomore at UTB, and he was in the chess program for 10 years. Okay, the question that I have is, our funding for chess seems to be a little bit off balance in the sense that sometimes uh, we have a chess committee and they have proposals. The proposals go for the approval of the administration and of the board. Some of the proposals that have been brought into question and the people have said, well, they've been proposed year after year after year. We've really never had any results. So I'm here today to state that we really need your help as board members. One of the proposals that they had was the fact that uh, they wanted stipends for coaching so where you can have a little more uh, of a stipend for a coach instead of them getting $1,000 for a 12-month work because it is 12 months to go around. And another thing is funding more than seven children on the first, second, or third place team. I know a lot of people don't believe in that and they figure that seven is enough. But the last time we looked at a sport, if you fund only the offense and you don't take the defense, you're not gonna have much of a chance to get very far when it's your turn to do defense. And this is what the other half of the kids do for the chess board, I mean for the chess teams. 
All right, I've got uh, the proposals here. I uh, can give a copy, and if you all can look at it, because it comes from the Chess Committee, and it says the following proposals, three to six, deal with the budget and therefore need administration and board approval. Proposal three, four, five, and six. Yeah, the three is the national funding. Four is national funding for individuals. Number five is district chess funds, and number six is coaches stipend. We really never got a, an answer where how far this has gone or where it is, at what level or stage it's at, being that it's been over 10 years. Another thing also, I do appreciate very much that the superintendent is 100% for the program, and I want to thank him publicly because this is, and I say it from my heart, the first superintendent that has done this with a great job, and I want to thank him for that. I really believe that he works hard. He does excuse everyone for the chess program to go to a chess tournament. I would ask that, that they would get maybe field trip status and not an absent because the only time, if you look at my children from pre-K to uh, 12th grade, the only time they've ever been counted absent excuse, which was, they were at a chess tournament. They didn't miss school. My kids have come to school with a sling. If the doctor can't see him in the afternoon to, heal, you know, to put a cast on that broken arm because he's not going to use it to write, I tell him. And thank you that the district is safe enough that I feel comfortable sending my child to school and he's going to be safe and it's happened. I would like to end this statement that I have with uh, ladies and gentlemen. On Saturday, the 13th of October 13, 2007, there were 428 BISD students attending the Russell Chess Tournament. It takes discipline to be at a school on Saturday from 8 to 4, instead of being at home sleeping or watching cartoons. The desire of these children to get better at chess, to learn, to conquer, achieve, is demonstrated by all these children as they work to develop their brain. Yet more money is pumped into the ability to develop and produce with your brawn instead of your brain. I know that chess is not a money making for the district, but in the long run it will produce citizens that will be money makers for the community. This will help the citizens of Brownsville and its citizens prosper. Children from all walk of life, the haves and the have-nots, are on playing on a level field because everyone is born with a brain and they can strive to succeed and to learn to live side by side like ladies and gentlemen, whether they win, lose, or draw. This is the reason we desperately need your help and support and funding for the BISD chess program. One thing that I'm very proud of is that we can walk, it's an honor to walk into a state, national, or regional tournament and have everyone around the nation, the state, and the region stand up and take notice that the Brownsville BISD students are in the house because that's who they have to face and they know they've got a tough battle. So I, with my heart, ask you to support it, to look at the program a little closer. Uh, we have a lot of teachers that are doing this for free. We have several schools that have no coach as I stand here before you and those kids are out there by themselves competing and they're champions. And unless they get a coach, they have to dissolve that program. I ask you to help anyone who is willing to come and develop their brain and learn how to get out of any corner they get into, to sit there for three hours and make a big mistake and sit there and want to die and they hang on and at the end they come back and win the game. Well, see, that's what life's about, folks. To learn that if you make a mistake, you hang on and it'll be rectified and you will go on. And so I really, really ask that you from your heart look into this program and fund it more so that we can continue to produce the citizens that we're producing right now. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Peña. I appreciate your comments. i let the record re reflect. Mr. Lehman has joined us and Mr. Cortez is about to join us here momentarily. Our Excuse me. I have copies of the proposals. If you'd like to have them, I apologize. Sure. If you can just give them to, uh, to uh, Pat, she'll, she'll Thank you. let us have them. Thank you. Our next speaker is Mr. Orlando C. Trevino, School Progress in General. School Board President, Dr. Escobedo, uh, Superintendent Hector Gonzalez, Board Members, Administration, and Public. The reason I'm here is because I saw the article on the Brownsville Herald and I really thought it was very, very important. I saw. Uh, I want to congratulate Mr. Cortez on, on his statement because it is true. We got over 50,000 students here, and for one person with his administration, and I'm going to congratulate everybody, including board members. I'm talking teachers, administrators, bus drivers, uh, food service, maintenance, uh, secretaries, everybody. I congratulate principals, you name it. I congratulate all of you all, including the board members. 
<laughs> You're doing the self-evaluation as board members. You've got to give yourself an A-plus because you chose the right man. The fact is, in a year's time, there was 19 schools that were not passing federal. Right now, there's only six. That, to me, tells me 67% in a year. That is excellent. That means six to go. For you all, the superintendent, his administrations, and all his staff, that's a hop, skip, and a jump. You have to pat yourself on the back. You have chosen an excellent man. You, he's got excellent administration. He's got excellent people. He's got excellent principals. I mean, this is what I finally wanted to see. I wanted to see the school going forward instead of backwards. Before, it was all negative. Now it's starting to become positive. I really congratulate everybody. And when you all are looking at, at the evaluation of the superintendent, take a look at that 67% jump. If it isn't 30, it isn't 40, it isn't 50, 67%, that means only 33% left. And 33% to me is nothing because if he was able to take care of, and that, that's with everybody around him. When I say him, I'm talking his whole supporting staff. That means that the last 33% will be a hop, skip, and a jump. You have to pat yourselves in the back for having chosen the right person. I also want to congratulate all board members. I congratulate Mr. Cortez on his statement that he, he is underpaid. He is definitely underpaid because a lot of school districts with over 50, 60, 70,000 kids, and that's where we're going to. Normally would be divided into two school board members, two superintendents and everything else. You're talking one person with his whole administrative staff handling a huge, huge problem. I said, give him the rein on that, on that uh, military fleet and he'll guide in the right direction. And that's exactly what he's done. Let's keep it going forward. Let's don't go backwards. Anybody that votes against progress, and that's, what, that's exactly what it would amount to. Anybody voting against progress don't need to be up there because then they're not here for the children, they're not here for the employees, they're not here for the teachers, the principal, administration, superintendent, the community, or most important, the taxpayers. But the most important of all is the children. And when you're saying that all schools are getting close to passing federal, forget state because state is being passed, but when you start federal, that means you have just consolidated and done what your job was to do. Make sure that everybody is on a level playing field. You have to pat yourselves in the back when you're doing his evaluation and when you're doing your own evaluation. Remember one thing, his evaluation reflects on you all. His succession reflects on you all. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for positive progress. And I congratulate all board members for standing behind this man for having made the right choice. Because let me tell you one thing, I look at everybody and I think everybody knows me. I got away from the city. To me, this is a very important subject. My first priority had always been BISD. Everybody knows it. There was a, a few problems at the city, so I went and attended that and hopefully I, I made a, cha helped it, a change. Uh, but I had to come back because children are priority number one to me. And I, I guarantee you, my daughter, everybody else's daughter, to me, I don't find one more important than the other. When I speak for one, I speak for all. And we're looking for all the children, for the kids, for all parents to succeed. And you all are the only ones that can make that possible, and that's by keeping the right person, which is the superintendent, Hector Gonzalez, up there to keep this fleet going forward. We don't want it going backwards. We don't want it going sideways. We want positive remarks from the Brownsville Hero. We want positive remarks from Channel 4, Channel 5, not negative remarks. And I haven't seen that in a long time. So that's why I came here, to congratulate all of you. Mr. Gonzalez, I thank you very much for because I said I trusted you, and you didn't fail me, and you didn't fail nobody else because you have gone in the right direction. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Mr. Trevino. Our next speaker is Mr. Humberto Garcia, School Progress in General.
Good afternoon, Dr. Escobedo, board members, superintendent. My name is Humberto Garcia. I'm a representative for ADME, local union. I would like to give my sincerest uh, thank you to the superintendent, Hector Gonzalez, and uh, his administration. I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Trevino if he attend our last membership meeting last Sunday because we take a referendum for the first years of the superintendent performance over there, and the members vote A plus, plus, plus. And uh, we hope that we have Mr. Gonzalez for several more years to come. Because uh, as Mr. Trevino said, we are on the right direction. This is the first time that I see a United Board members since a long, long time ago. So keep the job as we're going right now. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Garcia. You invited me to your group some time ago, and I really appreciate uh, that invitation. You have a good, a good group of, of people. Our next uh, speaker is George Borrego, and there is no subject. Once I get to the microphone, it's hard to keep it on one subject. Sorry. Um, we support the effort about the cohort, cohort program with the, uh, with the college, and uh, we stress only that we do need to be sensitive for those individuals that are certified and ready to join the ranks that we do give them the proper consideration that they deserve. And TSTA uh, offers its support in terms of training, because as a, as a uh, national, as a local and national uh, and state organization, our emphasis has been on training and working with administration instead of the opposite. <coughs> so good job. We'd like to thank Dr. Cavazos and his CNI staff for a great presentation on the C-Scope curriculum. I wasn't there, but Albert was very impressed with it, and I'd like to congratulate the superintendent on the uh, new hires, because when you surround yourself with competence, competence prevails throughout the district, and it filters down. So that was very good. I noticed there were no grievances on the agenda today. That says volumes for something. We must be working well. And that leads me to the super's evaluation and pay. Uh, several years ago, and I lose track of time because I'm getting old, and I think that happens when you get old, we lost a very good candidate for superintendent. And I can't even remember his name, only that he was from Harlingen because we could not break the barrier. We could not break the $200,000 barrier. And we should have been there then, and we're not there now. We were there for a while, but we dropped. <coughs> As I was thinking about what I was going to say, I do some shopping at Kmart and some shopping at Dillard's. And I think when we hired uh, Mr. Gonzalez, we picked him up at Kmart at a good price. But he has proven his worth. The district is, is going forward, well-staffed. Uh, the figures are there. Everything is in place. We as an organization, uh, though we're not a union, uh, we love to call ourselves a union because it makes people nervous. Uh, <coughs> there's an open door policy. And we've been able to work things out and, and, and talk, and that's something that's very important. Because if you expect to go forward, you must have an open door policy with uh, good communication. Yes, you can have comparisons on school district size. And those comparisons indicate that there should be a raise. Yes, you can have comparisons 
on superintendent, uh, superintendent salaries all around the state, even down in the, in, the, in the valley. And that indicates a raise. But those, are, those should not be considered. What you need to consider is what is happening at this district, how we are going, the stability that we're finally experiencing, which we hadn't had for many, many years, and, and we, need, we need to show that appreciation the only way that sometimes we can, and that is with the appropriate compensation and the uh, fringe benefits that may go with it. I was uh, tickled pink to hear about the uh, presentation by uh, uh, Mr. Lorenzo where we are in terms of salaries. We have always asked for raises for the administrators because we are way below the state average. Why do we have a shortage in administrators? Because why do you want to go and be a principal or an assistant principal and work longer hours, be away from your family, and teachers, some teachers on that campus make more than you do. You need to be given the value that you are worth because if we don't do that for our people, then you have shortages, you have problems. I ask this board today to seriously look at their consideration for the contract and the pay raise, break that barrier, take a stand, and prove the worth of the man that, it's, that is running this district. Thank you. Our next speaker, Alberto Alegria, Land Clinic Stipends Food Service, NLLB and ESEA. I won't be talking about No Child Left Behind today. I'll save that for, for the next meeting. Good evening, members of the board, President Escobedo, Superintendent Gonzalez, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Alberto Alegria, the, pr the proud president of the Association of Brownsville Educators, representing over 2,500 men members in this district. First, I would like to commend the board for tabling and then rejecting the purchase of 10 acres of real estate for a large sums of money. Perhaps as a necessity for a for, uh, for the property to build schools. However, if we could negotiate a better price, we wouldn't object because we understand the need for relief in the populated campuses in the surrounding areas. The contemplation of the free clinics for all BISD employees continues to be an idea that AOBE will persist to dialogue with the administration and the school board members. As we engaged in recruiting of members throughout the summer with the association introduced the scenario of having these clinics in our BISD community. An overwhelming support of the idea of having these primary care locations, quote, would be great benefit for all the employees as a health service, unquote, was the overall response from our district employees, especially our educational, uh, our educational support professionals or our classified. We challenged the administration and the board members to keep the spirit alive and continue talks on this very important subject. Food service. Food service department and supervisors must refrain from promising food service employees full employment during their training, then very abruptly and unprofessionally deciding not to fulfill their promise and then even proposing to reduce their working hours. This type of behavior from management is unacceptable and a submissive maneuver to take advantage of our hard-working, dedicated, and loyal employees. These men and women at times wait for months and even years to obtain full-time employment in our district. Meanwhile, we promise and take advantage of their durable demeanor. I, I walk to school cafeterias and I hear their pain. This district must never exploit any employee in our district for the benefit of saving a small portion of money. We, the Association of Brownsville Educators, adamantly ask the central administration to investigate the actions of food service supervisors and hopefully find a solution to their business. Substitute, substitutes for BISD. 
As I listened to the presentation on SEMS, programs for substitutes, a comment made by, by the presenter raises the questions in regard to a substitute workforce. Presently, 30 college credit hours are needed to apply and become a BIZ substitute. However, in the standards, if the standards are raised to a college degree to meet the highly qualified teacher standards, a mandate constructed by No Child Left Behind disaster, then our problem with, with substitutes will multiply. Presently, the district has approximately 800 substitutes. If the latter situation is to take effect, your substitute workforce will be cut in half, creating another bad scenario. If a campus cannot fill a classroom with a highly qualified substitute, then the campus administrator has no recourse but to use campus staff to fill those spots. Campus staff substitute is a common procedure throughout our district. So we, the association, caution the administration and school board to study the repercussions that this new standard might bring to our district and our students. It's been some time since we visited the district stipend benefit. We, the Association of Brownsville Educators, are ready and willing to discuss preliminary recommendations and are doing our own review to see what is best for all parties. We look forward to, doing, we look forward to working with the administration that we may find common ground that will best suit the employees and the districts as we strive to raise the stipends. And last but not least, I'd like to concur with Mr. Borrego and Mr. Trevino and Mr. Garcia that, uh, uh, and George Borrego is our regional president, by the way, and he's kind of sort of my boss, but uh, I don't say that too loud, but since I'm saying it on TV land, but uh, uh, we believe that, that Mr. Gonzalez has done an excellent job in the district, and all I'm gonna say to the board is this. We're only asking you to be fair and, and justifiable in, in, in when you start making the decisions of giving him a pay raise. Uh, he's proven himself, he's done a good job. I, we, the association, like the job he's doing. Uh, our schools are, are going in the right direction. Uh, pay raises, of course, you guys had a lot to do with pay raises and, and the benefits that our employees get. So again, fair, and justifiable. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next item is our consent agenda. I have received a list from my colleagues indicating that, it, that there is a need to discuss and or deliberate the following agenda items. Uh, we will discuss item 12 and under closed meeting personal matters we will discuss 31, 38, 39, 40. So item 12, 31, 38, 39, and 40 will be discussed. Mr. President. Mr. Counselor? Uh, yes, yes, sir. I would suggest number 37 as well. Uh, the employee may be available to comment. Okay. So we will discuss uh, uh, item 37. Uh, I will now entertain a motion to approve the recommendation of administration as reflected on the consent so agenda. A uh, motion by Mr. Uh, Aguilar, seconded by Mr. Cortez. All in favor, raise your right hand. Aye. The motion <coughs> passes unanimously. Moving on to item 12. Recommend approval to submit the class size waiver petition to the Texas Education Agency for grades K through 4th for the fall semester of the 2007-2008 school year. Uh, discussion, Mrs. Galvan. Yes, uh, on this item, as I was reading through it, I did notice that there were two campuses that uh, were, that is why we're going to, to ask for the waiver, and I just wanted to congratulate the superintendent because uh, how many campuses do we have and how many sections? Uh, Mr. Gonzalez? Mr. Gonzalez? Thank you, Dr. Scott, the members of the board. Yes, we're, we're, we're very pleased with uh, the work we've done. Um, this is phenomenal. We have over 1,045 1, 1, sections. That's a lot of sections. And only two sections did not meet the 22 to 1. And those are only have 23 students in there. Uh, this is phenomenal. This is, this is great for our district. That means everybody's at 22 to 1 or below, except for those two sections. And my congratulations to all the staff, the principals, HR, everybody that works together as a team to get it down to that number. This is really, really good. We're continuing to monitor this, and uh, this is uh, something that, that we're real proud of. And 
I'll be glad to answer any questions, but with only two sections, and both of them only have 23 kids in there. Mr. Cortez, did you have a question? Uh, same question, Mr. Mr. Aguilar? No, uh, of course, we're all excited that only two, because uh, of so many sections and so many school districts, I mean, excuse, campuses, that we only have two. And, uh, and I'm really happy because we have a fast growing population. Uh, I know in the past we have had no examples, you know, it has been zero. But this year it's kind of unique that we're growing so fast. And uh, be able to only have two, it's, 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 it's good. I hope we can get out of it next year. Well, we I agree. Congratulations to everybody that participated. Mrs. Galvan. Just one more comment. I don't know if we uh, have pamphlets when we recruit teachers, but it's a really good recruitment um, tool because it's 22 to 1. <laughs> Any other comments or questions from the board? Again, congratulations for this, this, this good work and keep maintaining this, this class size. Uh, do I have a motion to approve item 12? Okay. Motion by Mr. Cortez, seconded by Mr. Aguilar. In favor, raise your right hand. Right. Motion passes unanimously. Okay. Moving on to closed meeting. As pursuant to Texas Government Code Section 551.071, EDSEC, the board now goes to closed session. <laughs> the board reconvenes after closed session. Item number 31, recommend approval of term contractual personnel for 2007-2008 school year, assistant administrator for special services, subject to receipt of all outstanding documentation. Do I have a motion to approve item 31? Move. Motion by Mr. Power, seconded by Mr. Cortez. All in favor, raise your right hand. Right. Motion passes unanimously. Item 37, recommend suspension without pay of a probationary contract employee for good cause. E-A-H. Do I have a motion to approve item 37? Yes. Motion by Mrs. Uh, Galvan, seconded by Mr. Cortez. All in favor, raise your right hand. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Item number 39, discussion, consideration, and possible action regarding the superintendent's contract, annual review, summative evaluation. Do I have a motion? President. Mr. Galunga? <coughs> I move to raise the salary of the superintendent to 205000 a year in addition to a vehicle allowance of $500 a month and a one-year extension of the current term of the contract, all effective November 1, 2007. I have a motion for Mr. Galuga. Uh, let, let me uh, finish the last part. Oh, I apologize. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, the uh, board and superintendent additionally agreed to amend the superintendent's contract to include written performance benchmarks approved by the board and the superintendent to be attached in writing to the contract prior to December 21st, 2007, effective November 1st, 2007. Motion by Mr. Colunga, do I have a second? Second by Mr. Cortez. All in favor, raise your right hand. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Congratulations, Mr. Gonzalez. Mr. Gonzalez. Um, thank you, Dr. Escobedo. First of all, I want to thank uh, the school board, all the board, school board members, uh, we, can, we want to continue to work as a team of eight. Uh, and I think this, the administrative team is well on board also. And we want to continue to work for the betterment of the district and the betterment of the students in this district. So I thank you for your vote of confidence and everything you've done for myself in this district. And uh, we look forward to working with you for another year. Thank you very much. Comments from the board? Anybody? Again, congratulations, Mr. Gonzalez. Uh, item number 41, consultation with the attorney regarding pending or threatened litigation matters. Do I have a motion? Mr. President. Mr. Powers. I move to approve attorney fees as authorized in executive session in special education case Joshua R. Dash docket number period 334-SE-0817. Do I have a second? I think I'm Mr. Cortez. All in favor, raise your right hand. The motion passes unanimously. Is there another motion? Under Mr. President, yes. Uh, I move to approve attorney's fees as authorized in executive session in special education case Carlos Q dash docket number period 002 dash SC dash 0907. Do I have a second? Second by Mrs. Uh, uh, Galvan. All in favor, raise your right hand. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Any other motions under legal? That's it. If not, we move. Uh, to announcements. Our next regular board meeting of the Board of Trustees is on Tuesday, November 6, 2007, here at the Administration Building at 5.30 p.m. Mr. Gonzalez, any other announcements? Yes, just a reminder to the public and uh, to you board members, if you want to attend uh, the next uh, 
superintendent's copy or the first one of the year will be on the 25th of October. And uh, Ms. Brown, can you tell us the place? I remember. Yes, sir. It's the International Christian Center uh, down on Paredes Line Road, and it's from 9 to 10.30 a.m. So I welcome all of you, if you can, to attend to that, uh, that coffee. It will be the first one for the year. Thank you, Mr. Gonzalez. I have a motion to adjourn. Oops. Motion of Mr. Paris, seconded by Mr. Cortez. All in favor, raise your right hand. The motion passed unanimously. This meeting is adjourned. Good night.